Mate, what day is it today? It's World Day Against Child Labour. Nah, not that. Something else. Well, don't you care about the children? Well, yeah, obviously I do. It's just something... Oh, my God, it's the first day of the World Cup show. Marek, I've got to go. What about the child labour? No! Nah. It's also Independence Day in the Philippines! Hello everybody, Thursday the 12th of June 2014, welcome to the World Cup show and you're right, it did take some of the finest creative minds on the planet weeks to come up with that title. Now coming up on today's show, we'll get stuck into the latest dance moves storming the clubs of Rio. He's prettier than Neymar and slightly more articulate than Wayne Rooney, football writer Julian Laurent joins us in the house. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. And we've got Jonathan Wilson in Sao Paulo and Marek Larwood on the streets of London. Now, if that's not worth subscribing to, I don't know what is. Right, it's day one of the World Cup, so let's catch up on some of this week's big news. Who doesn't love a last minute injury before a big tournament? By the way, I think I tore my groin just before the start of the show. Yeah. Germany's Marco Royce out of the World Cup. So is Colombia's Falcao. Ditto France's Franck Ribéry. But that's okay, France, because there's always Sam Nasri, right? Right? Oh, he's busy. The Ox might be out for England, but then again, he might not. Suarez was out, now he might be back in, which is also known apparently as doing an Ox. There was a protest or two. Roy Keane is out too, but Adrian Charles is still in, which led to another protest. Cameroon refused to get on their plane headed for Brazil, and FIFA's main sponsors have backed, wait for it gang, a corruption investigation. Sepp Blatter countered by calling the British press racist. What? Wasn't talking about us, wasn't talking about us. And launched a defense, in the most obvious place an under fire FIFA president should, his Twitter account. <laughs> that clears that up then. No doubt next week, Seb will be defending himself on a whole host of other social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Snapchat, and Tinder. But who cares about the actual football when we've got the highly anticipated opening ceremony to look forward to, right? Oh, yes. yeah. Good news, gang. Jennifer Lopez is back in. Thank God. And will perform later on, having pulled out at one stage, citing production differences. I hear you, J-Lo. Right, let's set some ground rules on this show right now. Anybody, anyone, plays any of the We Are One song, buy it. Okay? Out. <laughs> Brazil, get the party started tonight against... Well, we all know who Brazil are playing, right? It's not as if that people obsess about the big teams and ignore the less fashionable. So, who are Brazil playing in the opening game? I'm not sure. Uh, no idea. I'll say Italy, maybe. England. I think uh, England. Any guesses? Croatia. That's right. Was it right? Was that actually a proper guess? It was actually a guess. Yeah, of course. It's Croatia. You all knew that, didn't you? You all knew. More on Brazil, Croatia a little bit later on. Every day throughout the tournament, we'll be bringing you some of the best bits we found on social media, and some of them are even football related. So to get you in the mood, here are our faves from the last few days. Here's Roy Hodgson showing him how it's done. That's just like watching Pirlo, isn't it? Still got it <laughs> he does still have it. Next up, Julio Cesar, stoical about leaving Toronto. I felt selfish, special, believe me. I don't know why I explained it. Seven games. Next up, an American reporter proves once and for all that it's never awkward when people start rapping at you. You're playing in the mid, you don't got Donovan no more. I need you to go to the lane, I need you to score and score. If you could tell me how you're going to stop Ronaldo, we can do this thing whether it's fast or it's slow. Surely that interview can't get any more uncomfortable than that, can it? You gotta stop Cristiano Ronaldo from scoring the goal. Trying to keep these pockets swole. We ball out control. We're playing Ghana three times, but we're gonna do it better this time because we've been on a grind. We're, uh, you think about Germany, they're gonna win the World Cup, but this time, the USA, that's what's up. Uh. <laughs> that's what's up. That performance understandably prompted the world's greatest rap star slash money supermarket frontman to big up MC Dempsey. Shout out to Clint Dempsey, the number one soccer player in the world, yes sir, and the whole USA soccer team. Good luck on the World Cup and bring it home. Yes indeed, Snoop, wishing everyone a little bit of luck on the World Cup. Right, somebody else who's in the need of a bit of luck is one of our team out in Brazil, Jonathan Wilson. Jonathan, how have FIFA been treating you so far? 
What FIFA have been extremely good at is stopping you bringing water into the stadium, at stopping you doing anything that might infringe on, on their sponsors, on broadcast rights. What they've been terrible at is, for instance, everything else. OK, so is it looking like they're going to be ready? The whole place just looks unfinished. There's tarpaulins over things, there's patches of, of concrete that's still setting. Um, you don't have a, I, you know, there's, I don't have a huge amount of confidence that the things will work. All eyes on Neymar, of course, but just how good is he when appearing for his national team? Well, it's taken him 47 games to get to 30 goals for Brazil. He now has 31 and 49, a rate of 0.64 per match, which is a higher return than his contemporaries Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. But only eight of his 31 goals have come in competitive competition, four of them in the Confederations Cup, two in the Super Clasico de las Americas, a sort of old firm derby for Brazil and Argentina, and two at the Copa America, which is probably the only real competition of the lot. So two goals that really mattered in 49 games. Not so scary now, is it? Julian Laurent joins us now in the studio. Hi, Julian. Excited about the World Cup, I'm guessing? Yeah, very excited, man, of course. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say no. No, no not I at all. Nah, what am I doing on this I show? Don't watch it. We've got Brazil, Croatia uh, coming up in a bit. And I've got a special gift for you, which is right here in honour of Eduardo. We've called that the Eduardo Testimonial. Wow. And this is a scarf that we've made. Let's have a look at this, oh, which has wow, Eduardo's that's... beautiful face on it. And then, of course, Brazil. Now, this is yours. Oh, not so fast. You. Not so fast, oh. Julian. You've got to earn this, OK? Right. Three questions we're going to ask you. If you get them right, what are we saying? Three out of three gets it? All three. You've got to get these right and you will wow. get the scarf. Okay. Pressure, pressure. First up, how many teams did Nico Kovacs manage before getting the Croatia job? None. Wow, I've got it here that he managed the under 21s. Oh, yeah, but that, that doesn't count. Well, that's happened to me, that proper right, football. We'll give it, we'll give it, we'll it's a team that's yeah, yeah, managed yeah, the team, right? No, come no. on. No. Well, I mean, Just because it's the first the show. Kids. All right. The all right. Kids. Okay, this is a visual one, Julian. Okay. Have a look at this. Which of these teams is Australia and which is Brazil? Ooh. Okay, on the left is Brazil and on the right is, Cro is Australia. It's the correct answer, yeah. Now, now, one of the things we love about the World Cup, of course, is the fact that in most squads, there is a player whose name you can't pronounce. Yeah? Oh. We've all know those, right? So luckily, we got you on hand, my friend, to clear it up. Now, because as it's Croatia, this is today's name you can't pronounce. Have a go at that, Julianne. Wow. Have a go at that. Shime Vrashko. Shime Vrashko, that's yeah. not bad. What are you guys going for? Simon. 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 <laughs> Simon Silly. Uh, we put it through Google Translate. Sign verse or co. Mm. Yeah. But the definitive answer, my friend, is coming up for you right now. We've asked a journalist friend of ours uh, who was, uh, we chatted to uh, in our Your Shout Croatia special. Her name is Anna Blanca. It is pronounced Shime Versalco. Well, I think it's pretty clear. I think the fellas, you guys were... Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, Come yeah, on, she said it like me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Should we give it to him? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Here's the condition, yeah. though, yeah. Julia. <laughs> it's a fix. Uh, You've got to wear that for the rest of the yeah, show. Yeah, I've got a dinner tonight as well. I can take <laughs> wear it. that to the dinner. I want to see photographic evidence of that. All right, good <laughs> stuff. Julian, let's um, look at Brazil Croatia in a bit more detail later on uh, in the show. I want to talk generally about the World Cup while I've got you here. Because most people like to adopt a second team. Yeah. Tens people, particularly England fans. Uh, uh, who's your second team in this tournament? I'll go for Belgium. I think mm. they've got a very talented squad. It's, it's their first big competition. They like a bit of experience, but they're very talented. We know them going forward. Hazard, Miralas, Lukaku up front. They will miss Benteke, but overall I think it's a fantastic squad. And, and very exciting one as well, the one you want to see. You, you wonder how, how they're going to do. They're going to do well. They, they will probably qualify from their group and then play either Germany or Portugal. So, you know, we will know soon what they're really made of and, and if they can maybe pull out a great result in that competition. Right, Julian, let's look at tonight's game in a bit more depth. Uh, grab these. They're Thank three you. cards. Now, every time a guest is on our show, they will be able to play one of the cards at uh, any stage during the show to highlight certain things head to head, where you can highlight an on pitch battle that you like the look of. Breakout star, that's another card. Keep that to football, right. yeah? Uh, and Unsung Hero, which player in the tournament just isn't appreciated? Okay. I think James Milner, if, yeah, you wanna go, if you want to go with that one. Uh, let's look at the probable lineups for tonight's game, mm -hmm. though. Do you think that people are, are overplaying the pressure on Brazil? Overhyping that as a problem? Yeah, I do a little bit, because I think it's, it's an incredible advantage. We've seen so many uh, hosts winning, actually, the World Cup in their country, which more than the other way around. So you must think that it's actually an advantage more than than a disadvantage and, and I think yes Brazil people are crazy about football and 
there's a lot on Neymar's shoulders and the rest of the team, but however, I, I still think it's a great advantage more than the other way around. Do you think Neymar's ready to take that step up? I think it is a bit early for him. He didn't have the greatest of seasons with, with Barcelona. There was all the problem with his transfers and, and all of that. And I think that's played on his mind. I think now he's, he's in a better shape physically and mentally because he's back home and, and he can feel all the enthusiasm from, from the, the people there. However, I think, like we, we, we've seen in the stats, that you know, he has never really performed. He's never done a big tournament apart from the Copa Nation Cup, which is not really the same. He hasn't scored many in the Copa America either. So I think this one is probably, despite being at home and then being the big favourite, it's like he's going to discover it more than really explode, I think. And again, you're looking more at in, in four years' time where he's probably be more at his peak for sure. Now, for this fixture, you want to play one of your cards, the unsung hero. Who's your unsung yes, hero? Yes, indeed. Game? And he will feature in the game tonight, obviously, it's uh, Ivan Rakitic, the uh, Croatian midfielder. I think he's a just fantastic player. He's on the verge of, of joining Neymar at Barcelona from Sevilla. He won the Europa League this season with, with the Spanish team. And he's just a playmaker, uh, such a creative midfielder. And, and hardly anyone talks about him, which is very unfair, because I think he's got fantastic talent and, and he's only 26, so he's got a, a bright future ahead of him. OK, we'll get your predictions for that game in just a bit. But in the absence of three games tonight, we're going to allow you to play your other two cards how you want. So next right. up, head-to-head. -head. Yes, my head-to-head. -head. And again, I'm really, really looking forward to is, uh, is Spain against Chile. Mm. I think Chile have a fantastic team, a great squad with very talented players, a very good coach as well. And they play a 3-5-2 formation that could cause problems to, to Spain. They're a very different team than Spain. Spain, as we know, is tiki-taka football. Chile is a very um, team with pace and a lot of intensity in the game. They play a lot in transition with Alexis Sanchez up front and Vargas and Arturo Vidal, who hopefully will be fit for the game as well after his knee surgery. And I think that they can cause a lot of problems to, to spend and they can be the dark horses of the competition. You know, a lot of people see them going far because of that great squad they have and the great mentality. When you say far, how far do you think Chile can go? Because I've got them each way. Is that a, is that a mug bet? or No, I think that's a very, that's a very clever bet, actually. Well done, because... I think they can easily go to the quarterfinal and be a bit like the Uruguay or the Ghana of four years ago, clearly. Don't have them in the sweepstake, by the way. I've got Iran and Honduras in my That's, sweep. that's going to go well. Okay, <laughs> so that's your head-to-head. -head. What about your yeah. breakout star? For the my breakout star, there's, there's a few, I think, very good young players coming through in that tournament. I went for Jordi Classy, the, uh, mm. the, the Netherlands midfielder, who's, who's not 23 yet, he'll be at the end of the month. Uh, but he's a talented, very, very talented midfielder. Plays for Feyenoord, but in a few years' time you will see him in the Premier League. There's no doubt about that. And, and style of player is he? He's a, a creative midfielder who retained the ball so well. The vision he has, the quality in his passing is brilliant. He's a ve very clever midfielder as well in his positioning, in his movement as well. He can go. I think he created uh, 36 or 37 chances this season in the Eredivisie. And uh, yeah, I just think he's he's a sort of all-rounder. Midfielder, he's quite short, so you don't expect him to win every ball in the air or be very tough in the challenges. But with the ball, he's, he's an outstanding player. Okay, good stuff. Right, I think it's time for some predictions. Let's get some basics then. If this was a predictions World Cup, uh, this wouldn't be so much the group of death as the group of a mild head cold. Right. But there are some big hitters in uh, our predictions league. Barry Glenn Denning, okay. Ian Pryor, the sports editor of the Guardian, Mary, who is our school teacher. From Brazil, right? Uh, I'm worried about her. She's the dark horse, definitely. We've also got some of the grumpiest guys in Brazil. We've managed to find uh, from Bigodi's Bar uh, in Salvador. All Argentina fans, okay. despite being native Brazilians. And Julian, of course, you're in there too. Right. Um, so for Brazil, Croatia, what have you gone for as a scoreline? I go. F I went for two nil. Sorry. Uh, let's see what Mary, the school teacher, says. Right. Bom dia, Natalie. Tudo bom? Obrigada. Hang on. What, what did she just call me? <laughs> Bon dia, Natalie. <laughs> I thought so. Who told her that? Uh, right, what's her prediction? Brazil 3, Croatia 0. All right, Mary's going for that. I'm going for 3-0 Brazil. OK. Uh, all the other predictions uh, will come in and we'll see how that tournament goes as the World Cup plays out. That's just about it for today's show. Thanks, Julian. My pleasure. We'll be seeing plenty of him throughout the course of the tournament. Let us know your predictions for Brazil, Croatia in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe because tomorrow... We've got Dutch legend Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank in the studio. Well, that deserves something, right? Woo! Woo! Yeah, that's right. Now, for plenty more World Cup content, check it out right here on the channel. Ah, oh, but before we go, Julien has an appeal for our viewers. What is it, Julien? Special appeal for all our viewers. 
me and my son, my son Raphael, we need six more stickers to finish our album. Six. O obviously, the World Cup starts tonight. We need Samedov from Russia, Olivier Giroud of all people, no, the Ecuador team, things like that. I've got plenty. That's my uh, swap box. Swap box. Oh, I'll yes. take a look at that. I'll see what I'm going to tell got plenty of swap for you. I'm, I'm happy to exchange three or four against the Olivier Giroud, five against the Ecuador team, mm. seven against Samedov. I need also Mauricio Isla from uh, from Chile, so I can yeah I give you many if you if we right. can finish them. Don't milk it. Hey, don't steal give, any though. give us don't some for the set any. though, right? I want at least Nasri. While I'm looking through these, will you sign our table? Oh yeah, of Lovely course. Jubby. Nothing of course. rude. All right, good no, stuff. No, yeah, we'll never. see you tomorrow.